Hello everyone. Um, so today we're going to talk about four dimensions. And first of all, a disclaimer, this is a two-dimensional representation of four dimensions, so don't get your hopes up too high. Also, I want to clarify something. Sometimes when people refer to four dimensions, they're talking about space-time. So space-time consists of three dimensions, the three with which we are familiar, and then time as a fourth dimension. That is not what we're talking about here. We are talking about four spatial dimensions. So um, we'll consider two perspectives as we discuss this. The first is how do you actually work in 4D? And it turns out that's the easy part. Most of the mathematics that we need to do in 4D is very similar to what we were doing in three and two dimensions. The second part is how do you visualize in 4D? That is much more challenging, and we'll spend a little time discussing that as well. So, first of all, working in 4D, what does that look like? Well, in four dimensions, you have four axes, and therefore, if you want to represent the location of a point, you use four coordinates, x, y, z, and w. So, just an extension of the three-dimensional case. Uh, similarly, if you want to find the distance between two points in four dimensions, you're still going to use the same distance formula that you used in two and three dimensions, but now again it's going to have four terms. What if you wanted to write the equation of a line? The parametric equation of a line can be extended into any number of dimensions. So in four dimensions, the parametric equation of a line would look like this. Same thing as two or three dimensions, but again, there's four terms. Now the equation of a plane in four dimensions is more complicated, and we won't get into that today. What about the angle formed by vectors? Well, again, the dot product can be extended into any number of dimensions. So it's still the same dot product, it's just that your vectors would have four terms instead of three or two. In four dimensions, we talk of coordinate spaces. So that's also a change. In two dimensions, we have two coordinate axes. In three dimensions, we have three coordinate planes. And in four dimensions, we have four coordinate spaces. Of course, there's an infinite number of spaces in total. Just like in three dimensions, there are an infinite number of planes. Three coordinate planes, but an infinite number of planes are possible in three dimensions. In four dimensions, an infinite number of spaces are possible. And the general equation of a space is just a linear equation with one equal sign. So this would be how you write the equation of a space in four dimensions. Okay. Um, now, one of those spaces corresponds to the space with which we are familiar, our three-dimensional space. Okay. And the equation of our three-dimensional space would just be w equals zero. If you let w equal zero, then we just have x, y, and z in our equation, and we're back into three dimensions. All right, so that's pretty straightforward. So now let's work a little bit on visualizing in 4D. Um, and first of all, I wanna say, the fourth dimension is not like a place that you could theoretically go to, all right? The fourth dimension is no different than the three dimensions we know. It's just one more dimension just like those three dimensions. So it's not something new or different, it's just more of what we already know. More space, you can think of it as. I want to start with a puzzle. So you've got three matchsticks, and you can put those three matchsticks together in order to form one triangle. Okay? Now, imagine I wanted to form two triangles congruent to this, two congruent triangles. How many matchsticks would I need for that? You might be inclined to say six, but if you think about it, I could put one matchstick here and one stick here, 
and both triangles could share that side. So then I would only need five matchsticks total in order to make my two triangles. So the question I want you to think about is what is the minimum number of matchsticks required in order to make four congruent equilateral triangles? I'll give you a moment to think about that. The number of matchsticks required, the minimum number, to create four equilateral triangles. No chin scratching. Try to draw some diagrams. So, um, you might have come up with the number 9, and that would be if we keep adding two more sticks for each triangle. Um, but as it turns out, that's not the correct answer. The minimum number of match sticks that you need for four triangles is 6. How could we make four equilateral triangles with just six match sticks? The key is to think in a new dimension. All right. Now, if you figured this out on your own, then you can pat yourself on the back. More importantly, that sort of pop that happens in your brain when you suddenly realize, wait, I can go into another dimension and solve this problem. That's what you want to nourish. That's, the, that's what has to happen when you start visualizing in four dimensions. You have to allow yourself to think in a new dimension. Give yourself more space to solve the problems. All right, when might you encounter four dimensions? Well, there's some very realistic examples. Um, for instance, in chemistry, we are familiar with the formula PV equals nRT, where P is pressure, V is volume, N is the number of moles, and T is temperature. All four of those things could be varying in a dynamic system. Okay? Usually when we use this equation, all but two of those are fixed. But in theory, all four of those could be changing. And if you wanted an accurate representation of what that looks like, you would need to have four coordinate axes on which to graph. You need a pressure axis, and then one for volume, one for moles, and one for temperature. So that's a very simple example of how you might use four dimensions. Um, but what about something more mathy? All right. Well, traditionally, when we graph in two dimensions, we have an x-axis and a y-axis. Um, and I'm going to switch here, I think, if I can pull this off so that I can draw something. Um, all right, let's use this. Okay, so as I said, in two dimensions, we've got just those two axes, but we've already seen that um, once we got into complex numbers or two-dimensional numbers, what we think of as a one-dimensional number actually can have two dimensions. It can have a real part and an imaginary part. So imagine a coordinate system, and we can think of this as x and y, but this is really only the real part of x, and this is only the real part of y. What if we add another axis like this, perpendicular to both of these, and this is the imaginary part of x, and then we add another axis maybe like this, and that would be perpendicular to this, and that would be the imaginary part of y. So now all of these axes are mutually perpendicular, okay? This would be like the complex x-plane divided by these two axes. This would be the complex y-plane represented by those two axes, and all together we would have four dimensions, okay? So there's another example of a four-dimensional system that you might use. Now I should also mention something I think you can see here. In um, two dimensions, it's possible for two lines to either be parallel or else to intersect. 
But when we move into three dimensions, there's another possibility. Um, two lines can be skew. Right? So they're neither parallel nor do they intersect. Well, now what about planes? In three dimensions, two planes can either be parallel or else they can intersect. Kind of like this. There. All right, there's two planes intersecting in a line. However, in four dimensions, it's possible for planes to be skew and they could intersect in just a point. What would be an example of that? Well, for instance, in this drawing, these two axes would represent the real numbers, x and y, and our other two axes would represent the imaginary parts of x and y. As we know, real and imaginary are distinct. However, those two planes, the real xy plane and the imaginary xy plane, would intersect right there at the origin. So that would be an example of two skewed planes. Um, notice they have one point in common, okay? And there's a dimensional thing going on here that we don't need to talk too much about, but lines intersect in one point. When they're skew, they intersect in zero points. Planes intersect in a line, so when they're skew, they intersect in a point. Okay, um, while I'm here, the other thing I wanted to talk about is maybe another exercise for helping us to visualize. So let's do this. Let's think about, um, let's see, dimension, shape, um, vertices, and then I'll call it boundaries. Okay, so in one dimension, the common shape would be a segment, which has two vertices, and the endpoints of that segment are those two points. Okay, um, what about in two dimensions? In two dimensions, you can have a square. All right, that square has four vertices, and the boundaries are four segments. All right, what about three dimensions? Three dimensions, if we move that square perpendicular to itself, we get a cube. That cube now has eight vertices, and the boundaries of that cube are six squares. So now, what about four dimensions? Well, let's look at the patterns here. Um, in, terms of pat in terms of vertices, we have two, four, eight. This is an exponential function. So the next term would be 16. And in terms of boundaries, two points, four segments, six squares, we would end up with eight cubes. All right, well, what would that look like? Uh, let me get out of here and we can go back to this. So here we have, um, all right, let's count them. There's a cube on the inside. There's a cube on the outside, and then each of these faces is a cube. So that's a total of eight cubes. And then there are 16 vertices. This is known as a tesseract. Here, let's do this. Um, or also a hypercube. A tesseract is a four-dimensional cube. So you can see that we can determine the what this might look like even though we can't go into four dimensions as it were we can extend our mathematics all right hopefully that's enough to get you started with this work and to start thinking about four dimensions